Alrighty, welcome to another Arena MH3 draft. I think this format has some issues, writhing chrysalis among them, and kind of what it represents, but I have been having fun with it, and this pack, I will not be first picking an Eldrazi card. I think I will take Abstruse Appropriation here. There's also Fang Flames, Arcbound Condor, Signature Slam is solid, but this is a easily splashable, powerful card. I don't mind starting there and, you know, taking taking maybe an excuse to draft something that's not Eldrazi because I think this format's got a lot of cool stuff to offer. I do think the Eldrazi cards are a bit too pushed, but uh, we'll see where we end up here. And ooh, second pick, there's a Flare of Malice. So four mana and uh, they sack a creature or planeswalk the greatest mana value they control. So their biggest thing, which is usually kind of what you want to hit. And you can also sack a non-token black creature to pay for it. Take that over Petrifying Meddler. Metastatic Evangel, when I have a white card, you know, that's also a powerful thing, but I think drafting like maybe a Esper type style control deck could be in the cards here. Here we've got mm, Dreadmobile, which is a 3-3 Menace Crew 1 vehicle, and you can sack an artifact or creature to put a plus and plus one counter on it. It's just okay. Oh, still Solstice Zealot, I actually think has some legs as a kind of control card, though. Proud Pack Rhino is also just a great card. Three mana, three, three, and you either proliferate or it just gets a shield counter on any permanent you have, actually. There's also red, white, green, and blue, white, green lands. Mm. It's kind of hard to tell. There's also Fettered Gargantua, which direction I want to go. I think, I think I actually will take the Fettered Gargantua here as kind of a card advantage mechanism. And then, wow, Ondu Knotmaster and Glasswing Grace here, as well as a Cursed Marauder. Ripples, Ripples of Undeath I don't think is a playable card. It mills you for three a turn no matter what. Not a good idea. But this pack also is just seven black-white cards, right? <laughs> so that that that's a good sign. Uh, not Master versus Glasswing Grace. I think the Glasswing Grace is better. This card is really messed up. And ooh, now there's a Volt Storm Angel as well as a Scurrilous Sentry. Mandibular Kite and a Fettered Gargantua as well as Horrid Shadow Spinner. But... Angel's pretty decent. Five mana, four, four. You get three energy. It's got flying. Beginning of combat, you can either give all it vigilance and lifelink or your other creatures plus plus one. You have to spend two energy to do that. All right. I'm, I'm okay with that. And then, oh, Decree of Justice. Cycling, make a bunch of soldiers. Or two white, white XX, make a bunch of angels. Also, comedy of Zealous Thirst, Envoy, and Muster. So I think I'm in the right colors. And there's an Esper land here. And I think Decree of Justice looks like it could be good here. I think Envoy is okay, but and, and Muster is also decent, but I like Decree, and then I think I'm just happy taking a Proud Pack Rhino. These lands aren't quite that interesting to me, so all right. It's just solid black-white here, and maybe this deck, you know, is going to have trouble against Eldrazi in the late game. I think I've got some good stuff to do. Here, who it could take a draw three, but uh, I should probably take Angel of the Ruins. Seven mana, five, seven, exiles, two artifacts or enchantments, and it has plain cycling, so... You can cycle that thing early or cast it late. And this deck's got some good control cards and some good finishers. Black, white control, here we come, I guess. Arcbound Condor now. Four mana, three, three flyer. And if I get, can get some artifacts, it can do some work. Also, I have one artifact, one enchantment for Rose Cot Knight. Maybe I just take a second Fettered Gargantua here. I just think that's a little chunky. I've got a lot of expensive cards already. I'll, I'll take the Condor just kind of for curve purposes. And then here... I suppose I'll take Wing It, because I don't think I see myself playing the other stuff. Ooh, Solstice Zealot alongside Angel of the Ruins, or sorry, uh, Voltstorm Angel for a little bit more energy. All right, I'll take that, and really don't see a reason to move out of black-white. So get an artifact or a creature back, and then you have to pay energy equal to its cost. They spot you two, or just Expel. I should just take Expel. Nice removal spell. And... If I'm going to try to go slow, what are my kind of incentives to do that? I guess expensive cards like Fetid Gargantua, Angel of Ruins, Decree of Justice. Some card advantage would be nice. Uh, Ugin's Labyrinth is a strong card, but not for us so much. Mm, Argent Dias I don't think is very good. I could splash Kappa Cannoneer. Right now I have just Arcbound Condor as an artifact, but I could probably pick up more. Oh, Angel is also an artifact. There's also Sneaky Snacker, but I don't really have a way to draw cards or get into the graveyard, so maybe not that one. I actually don't think I mind Kappa Cannoneer. The card is just very strong. Oh, Wrath of the Skies? Okay. 
We are taking the Wrath here. This is perfect for our control deck. Bunch of white cards in this pack too, and uh, maybe we'll get one back. So the Cannoneer wasn't like a, car, a pick I was very excited by, but I do really like Wrath, and maybe we could be just black-white energy control. That's a funny archetype, but I think it's got some potential here. <laughs> now there's a there's a triple black card here with Frexian Black Mana, but I'm going to take a Johnny Fells the God Sire. Five mana, exile one of their big things, kind of like Elspeth Conquers Death. Then you make a 2-1, then you give a creature double strike. All right. I mean, that, that's just a pretty good card, I think. <laughs> Another Kyrick, Son of Yawgmoth. Um, four mana, 3-3 three, three flying support, two is just pretty good rate. Ether Revolt is a really messed up card. I think I'm just going to take this. I mean, I have Wrath of the Skies, Volt Storm Angel, St Solstice Zealot. I only have a couple good black cards, and Ether Revolt's really busted. No, no sideboard cards. So I could have taken a late uh, Cyclops, dude. Here, now that I've taken the Ether Revolt, I should probably not take Scurrilous Sentry or Horrid Shadow Spinner. Pearl Ears, a three mana, three four Life Link. And then if you put an aura on a modified card, you draw a card. I don't have any auras yet. There's also a Prad Pack Rhino. Proliferate to get another energy seems pretty good. Let's just take the Rhino. Rhino seems pretty strong. I don't really want Flare of Fortitude all that much, but Cyclops Superconductor, that's the card I was thinking of. I think I'm just abandoning the black card. Maybe I'll try to sp splash Abstruse Appropriation if I can get the right fixing. And take Cyclops Superconductor here. And then here, now there's Witch Enchanter, which is great. There's also Emissary of Soulfire and Red White or Black White Lands. Um, I mean, I do like Witch Enchanter a lot. I think I should probably still take it over Emissary. Emissary, I think, is just all right. Oh, another Superconductor here or a Blue Black Land. So what can I also fetch with the Waterlog Teachings? I guess I can fetch the Abstruse Appropriation. I can't fetch... So it's instant or flash. I can't fetch wrath or decree. Mm. I think I'll just take the superconductor here and try to be Jeskai and not really worry about black fixing. If the abstruse appropriation works, great. Okay, jolted awake. Wow, that's a late malevolent rumble, but not really in a in a position to take advantage of that. And Voltstorm came back. All right, I'll take another Voltstorm. That seems fine to me. I guess I'm just like white red splashing a couple Cyclops superconductors and maybe Kappa Cannoneer. Yeah, I'll take a Riddlegate Gargoyle. I'll take Thriving Skyclaw, but I'm not that excited about it. I guess if I have Ether Revolt, I should probably run it. Really what I want to pick up is some lands. I There were a couple lands I could have taken, but I didn't feel like I was in the best position to do so. Now I know a lot more of, about what this deck wants to do than I did earlier. And uh, unfortunately it went from maybe a sweet black white control deck to probably Jeskai energy, but I do have a good setup for it. All right, pack three, let's get in there. Another Angel of the Runes, oh, a Null Drifter. Yeah, Null Drifter is great, even if you're not Eldrazi or anything, it's just a good card. Maybe this Aether Spike will come back or Contaminated Landscape. I'd even take Twisted Landscape, honestly, but uh, I think I'm just gonna take Null Drifter here. Be pretty happy about that in a decree of justice, but Felia is just a broken card. I, I'm just gonna take this. I have just every time I've seen this card cast, it's been incredible. Two mana, two two flash. When it attacks, exile any non-land permanent, and it comes back end of turn, so you can remove a blocker if you want. If you remove your own thing, this gets a plus one plus one counter. I have like double Rhino to exile. All the things that make energy, a Johnny Fells the God Sire, and then maybe between Glyph Elemental Decree Emissary. And Electrozoa, something comes back, but I'm really happy taking Felia here. And probably follow it up with, yeah, just another Witch Enchanter. It's just a really good card. It also means I can play a lot of lands effectively. There's some other decent white cards in that pack, and I guess the only thing I know is I'm playing a lot of white. Yeah, maybe this guy Claw. I really do want to play Aether Revolt. The card is great. Kappa Cannoneer, not looking very good for me. No Drifter seems totally fine. And I'll probably want some blue mana and some red mana, and then hopefully I can get a couple lands to make it tenable. Ooh, another Ajani Fells the God Sire. All right. I mean, white has seemed open, I'll tell you that much. Oh, also can Jolted Awake get 
Oh, can't get enchantment. So I can't get the Ajani back with that. That would have been nice. Here, do I have any artifacts and enchantments? I have two artifacts and four enchantments. Um, and one's a Griddlegate Gargoyle. Because I'm looking at that Rose Caught Knight and thinking maybe I should just take Expel. Or I could take Meteoric Mace. I think the Mace... No, it doesn't work with Felly or anything. Let's just take Expel here. Just take another kind of cheap removal spell. And then here, get two energy for a blue. Cursed Mirror. So if I have Felia, I can exile it and it can copy any creature. But if I have an ETB creature, I could just copy that. I should probably just take Fang Flames here. I don't, I don't think I have enough creatures for Thraven Charm anyway. All right, I have to take Perilous Landscape over all these spells. That's not particularly close. Razor Grass, Grass Ambush came back. Distinguished Conjurer. Excellent creature control, return it to the battlefield. Um, it doesn't really work with that many things I have. I wonder if I should just take Tune the Narrative or maybe just the Razorgrass Ambush. Yeah, I think it's probably just the Ambush here. <laughs> Another Angel, sure. Oh, red Black Land. If I'm playing a Swamp for Abstruse Appropriation, the Twisted Landscape does seem pretty good. Angel of the Ruins is okay. It does cost some mana to cycle. But it's a pretty strong card. Let's just take Angel. And then Decree came back. Okay. Uh, and sure, I guess I take Rose Cotton Knight. Yeah, I have kind of a lot of artifacts and enchantments now. And I think a second Jolted Awake is better than the, the Slith, though. Maybe not. No, no, Slith actually looks better. All right. And then I'll take an Axe that I'm not going to play. And... Let's take a look where we're at, but I'm thinking I'm just going to be white red and not even play like Riddlegate Gargoyle or the two superconductors. I don't know. Maybe I play the Abstruse Appropriation. Do I have to cut a bunch of cards anyway? Why don't I just cut all the blue cards? And then here I'm just white red with a Abstruse Appropriation off Glasswing Grace. How many spell lands do I have? I have kind of a lot actually. Hmm. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, no, four lands that I can play or spells I can play as lands and then two angels that cycle. So I probably want like 18 lands, which means 14 actual lands, which means uh, I'm well, well over. Let's see if I go to two swamps and a glasswing grace, that's three, but I don't even have that many colorless. At that point, maybe I should just cut obstru obstruse appropriation and do something like this. And this is six, 11, 12. So this is 14 lands plus those four is 18 plus two angels to cycle. And then I don't have to cut any more spells. <laughs> this is seven red sources for Ether Revolt, Thriving Skyclaw, Fan Flames. And this is seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 white sources. I can probably go one more red. And am I missing anything? Not really. I have a lot of, enough energy sources. I've Jolted Awake, Hex Gold Slith. Uh, the Rhinos can proliferate me. Solstice Zealot, Thriving Skyclaw, Double Volt Storm Angel. And it's not too bad. I don't need blue. It's just Null Drifter. And I can just cast this for seven mana. I think it'd just still be pretty good. Um, <laughs> if I get enough energy, I can get it back with Jolted Awake. And is there any reason to play like one blue for Null Drifter and any of these other blue cards? I don't really think so. All right, let's get in there. I think this is what I want to do. All right, time for round one. And I think Null Drifter is just a hard cast seven is pretty good in, in this deck with all the controlling cards. All right, I'll keep this hand. Mm, I guess I should play. No, I'm on the draw or sorry, on the play. They're probably not going to play a one drop that I need to expel. So I think I'm just going to lead on planes. Because if I draw another white source, I'm really not going to want to have cat played Glasswing Grace as a land here. Okay. Um, I didn't draw a land and I drew another expel. The other expel makes the game go longer though. So I think this is fine. And they played a, their own spell land as a land. Garden of Freilis. My turn, I guess I could play Pride Pack Rhino and give it a shield counter. Don't really have a better thing to do than that. It'd be nice to save this to get until I have some energy makers, but yeah, we're not there yet. All right, let's just play the Rhino. 
and put a shield counter on the rhino. Now it's pretty hard to kill. Looks like I'm going to play this Glasswing Grace as a land, but it's not really going to have cost me much because I'm not going to need to play two expels next turn. I will play one, though. Uh, oh, I'll play Razor Grass, Grass Ambush as a land. And then exp expel this. And hit them for three, so they're back to 20. Then next turn, if I draw a land, I'll play either Revolt in that land. But I guess with Null Drifter in hand, I really want to get to seven. So I'm probably playing Glasswing Grace here. Snapping Void Crow. Well, I'll probably be expelling that as well. Yeah, let's just wait. Let's just wait. All right. Expel the Void Crow. I mean, casting Glasswing Grace on this Proud Pack Rhino seems like it could be pretty good. See if they sack their sheltering landscape. They might not. They have red and green, so yeah, having colorless is probably more valuable. They're on like the Jurassic Park lands, I guess. Fair enough. Draw four. Oh, now they didn't want to. That's why they didn't want to sack the sheltering landscape because now they have a shuffle effect for their brainstorm here. Well. Lands are good for me. Spells are good for me. I guess I'm fairly happy. The, the brain surge means they are doing a lot more than than I'm doing. I mean, I guess I killed two other things. Yeah, they're not playing anything this turn. Yeah. If I draw a land, I'll probably just play Glasswing Grace on this Rhino. Hope they don't have a bounce spell or something. I mean, they've got to play a land this turn. Oh, I drew a Decree of Justice. All right, let's play Ether Revolt. Let's play Glasswing Grace as a land. And then now land gets me to Null Drifter, and then maybe I can cast a Decree. Drawing another expensive card in Decree made me really want to play Glasswing Grace. I think uh, this just makes me want to go Null Drifter into Hardcast Decree or Cycle Decree for like six soldiers, that sort of thing. Not playing the land that turn didn't make much sense. Propagator Drone. So they make a 2-2. Two -two. Their tokens have Evolve, and they can make tokens by... Uh, spending mana here but I kind of assume that's not what they're doing all right play my land send with the rhino okay they're making a token they can't be blocking here whoa that is deranged all right i just think eldrazi decks want to ramp usually let's cast null drifter draw my two <laughs> uh there there we go and next turn, I might just make two angels with the decree. If I draw a good play to play next turn, then maybe I'll make a third angel or wait. But I guess now that they played a seven drop that doesn't block the null drifter. Okay. Oh, I drew a decree. All right. So let's send with null drifter and uh, see if this red white control deck can, can take it down. They're sacking a land. All right, they got a 13, and then now cast this X equals 2, make two angels, pass the turn, and if I draw a play for next turn, I can play that and then make three angels, but there's a pretty good chance that they're just going to die to all these angels anyway, though one four or five reach kind of does shut me down. They go four or five reach, you know, the petrifying metal or tap down your null drifter, and then what do I do? Attack with two angels to deal four damage. That doesn't sound great. Pinnacle Monk getting back Brain Surge? Okay, that's not going to save you. I'm hitting for 12 now. Well, now I don't have to play the Decree because I can just cycle it. Yeah, I'll take seven. Okay. I mean, I assume they're not doing anything else. Any energy source kills them too. Like that. Attack. I mean, maybe they have utter insignificance or something, but I guess they would have gotten the Null Drifter before I attacked. And they really got a one? Okay. Thriving Skyclaw it is. And I can even cycle Decree for two. And... Bzzzt. All right. No, don't Brain Surge in response. Come on. Why, though? All right. Yeah, I mean, you get to put two cards back, I suppose. And explode. All right. 1-0. It's working so far. 
All right, time for round two. A little one and oh start here. I'm on the draw. Oh yeah, look at this hand. You know, I would like a land, but I have two drop into a pretty strong three and Phalia with these fives that both flicker is nice. And if I miss on, on lands, I can cycle the angel, though obviously I would prefer not to do that for the first couple turns. There we go. Now I can Phalia into Solstice Zealot. Immediately, if they don't have a blocker, immediately flip, flicker the, the Solstice Zealot and then get a plus and plus one counter on Felia and get up to four energy. All right. I mean, the Royal Cartographer is pretty good. They get landfall, make an energy, and then when they get to six energy, they can tap, spend the six, and draw three cards. That's a lot. All right. Teamer still. Yeah. I mean, are they not going to send? It's kind of weird. I guess no Razorgrass Ambush. Yeah, I even have that card in my deck. Pretty good. I could reason not to send here. Okay. Um, I'm going to take it because I'm worried about Fang Flames. I don't think it's very likely I have it, but no real reason to walk into it. Ooh. Don't mind drawing Wrath of the Skies in general. All right. Felia. Attack. Blink the Solstice Zealot. Like, look how sick this is. I got to hit them for two, and I end up with a 3-3 three, three, and four energy. Next turn, I've got Cycle Angel to Ruin, so not like the strongest turn in the world. And then Volt Storm Angel and Rose Cut Knight from there. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll play Perilous Landscape. You know, I don't really want to... So I think I'm going to use the Solstice Zealot. I'm going to tap this already Felia down, and then I'm going to upkeep use the Zealot to tap their Void Craw so they don't have a six man on their seven man on their next turn. Mm, I am kind of taking this turn off. That's a little unfortunate. But here's what it is. All right, so they get another energy. They're up to four. Still, they're just going to take three, and then I'm going to pass the turn. They get their... Void Craw back, upkeep, tap your Void Craw. Okay, end of turn, crack Perilous Landscape, cycle Angel of the Ruins, and oh, they're cycling Eldrazi Ravager, that's it? Okay, into Nightshade Triad, and no lands, I see. Okay, okay. So I think I'm gonna wanna upkeep, stop, tap their Void Craw again. Okay, let's sack the Perilous Landscape, though. Get a Plains. Cycle the Angel. Get a Plains. And draw. Oh, Aether Revolt. Okay. Now, that's a different story. Because now I go... Tap the Nightshade Dryer. Hold on. So if I tack with Felia and Flicker the Solstice Zealot, I can kill the... Oh, I can just kill the Void Craw? Yeah, all right. Tap the Dryad. Ether Revolt, because I'll have I'll have Revolt from the Solstice Zealot leaving the battlefield. Wild. All right. And then this comes back. And I'm dealing four damage, so let's hit the Void Craw for four. Pass the turn. I can't, unfortunately, tap anything, but they're also, like, pretty close to just dying themselves with... Wrath of the Skies and Voltstorm Angel in hand. I mean, next turn, if I just cast Wrath for four, I deal six to them. Voltstorm Angel deals five to them, assuming I, I have Revolt, which I think I will a lot of the time. Okay. Bouncing Felia. Yeah, pretty good. Draw two, discard one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not too worried about that. Um, I mean, the Voltstorm Angel just seems like the play here. And then I get three energy. Let's nug the Royal Cartographer, because they don't have six energy yet. Pass the turn. I'll decline to pay the turn, the upkeep. Or decline to pay that, and then upkeep. I'm going to use this the zealot to tap down nightshade dryad because I don't care if their depth defiler hits me for three. And then on my next turn, I'll be able to play rosecott knight and felia. Seems pretty good. Hmm. 
they need to use their nightshade dryad for something? I guess we'll see. Wrath of the Skies, not at its best against the Eldrazi deck, just because their stuff's a lot more expensive than than yours it tends to be. Oh, they discarded a Wampus Aberration. <laughs> it's a reasonably strong card, but they might not have time for all that. I mean, they're almost dead next turn, I think. Proud Pack Rhino, okay. Land. And so it gives other creatures you control plus and plus one. I'll just, I'll just give it Vigilance and Lifelink here. And then let them play what they will. Gift of the Viper, okay. And then I can just tap it. I would imagine they have something else. Uh, cycling Dranyard Lurker? Well, it's not really going to do it. Unfortunately, I don't have Revolt here. Otherwise, I could I could Fireball them for enough. Right now, I could fire... Oh, no, not even quite enough. Right now, I can Fireball them for five with Wrath of the Skies. Or I could go Proud Pack Rhino, Proliferate. That just deals one, though. Let's just play the Rose Cot Knight and leave up Felia here. Seems like the plan. Sure, I'll take Glasswing Grace. That card looks like it's really good here. They do have a lot of mana now. Eight, nine? Play like a Kozlak or something. Twisted Riddle Keeper. All right. Tap down Solstice Zealot and Voltstorm Angel, I suppose. Oh, no. Tap down those two. Okay. Well, they're just super dead to this Felia. All right. I'll take it. I'll get an 18. And turn Felia. They're at eight. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, this is pretty great. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Attack. Felia, the Twisted Riddle Keeper. And then they go to five. And then I just energy cast Wrath for five. And Aether Revolt does the trick. Easy enough. X equals five. Boom. Pay, oh, hold on. Actually, I can even do more because now I can do pay two. Felia will die. And then this Ether Revolt will actually deal seven instead. So I had him by two, and we are now two and oh. Uh, you love to see it. All right. Time for game three. Two and oh start here. Our uh, red white energy deck trucking along. I'm on the play. All right. Not the best Jolted Awake hand, but looks okay. And. I think given that I'm cycling Angel of the Ruins, I'm going to save Razor Grass, Ambush, and Witch Enchanter here. Oh, I even drew another removal, so I'll, yeah, let's just pass. Also, I really want to cast Witch, Witch Enchanter because cycling or uh, jolting it awake seems pretty good at some point here. All right, land, land. Yes, yeah, so let's just play land and pass. Can't jolt it awake the Angel yet. I need to generate a lot more energy. It is possible this, this deck can generate some energy. Yeah, there we go. Hex Gold Slith. Get in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, past the turn. I have removal to clear away blockers. I could also always play the Razorgrass Ambush if I really needed to. Ooh, Amp Raptor. Let's see what you hit. Oh, into Fanged Flames. Oof. That's a beat. All right. They did have to hit a two-mana play there, which is not the easiest thing to do, but... Good for them. And I guess I'm going to wait and cast Angel. Let's just pass the turn. I think I'm going to take one hit from this Raptor. I don't really know. I don't really want to cast any of these things. All right, let's play this as a land. Play Solstice Zealot and... Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll nug the Raptor. I, they just didn't do anything last turn. Feels like they're probably going to kill my Solstice Zealot. I'm not really sure what's going on over there. Nesting grounds to move counters around? Okay. Into glaring... Oh, are they like an Eldrazi deck? Okay. And Fang Flames makes a token. Sure. Well. Okay, there's Proud Pack Rhino. And I think... I'm going to proliferate here and give myself another energy because 
casting jolted awake and getting this angel back sounds pretty good yeah all right i'll pay seven energy unfortunately nothing to hit with the angel itself i have like millions of disenchants here <laughs> but i think putting a five seven into play seems pretty good i didn't have anything else to spend my energy on i'll tell you that much okay eldrazi linebacker is pretty great they can give something haste and attack for a lot oh there's an artifact finally okay if they give it if they give the charge bug menace and haste they can attack and trade for the rhino i think i'm just going to take it because i'm going to get it for free with witch enchanter or maybe angel of the ruins oh i drew a decree of justice i do want to cast that at some point you know what i'm just going to pay three life here cast another angel kill the charge bug and then send for five in the air with the first angel and then i'll probably just cast decree if i draw a land cycle it if, if not mm, furnace hell <laughs> oh my god and me fresh out of disenchants <gasps> all right that's unfortunate though I guess I would have had to block this turn anyway. So even if I had one, that wouldn't have changed a whole lot. Hmm. Oh, they didn't attack and I drew a Johnny Fills the Godsire. That's on them. Um, I will, in fact, though, leave an angel back because I don't want to die to this line breaker. And the two angels are, are still lethal next turn. So it feels like leaving one back is a good idea. They have eight mana now. <laughs> Another Furnace Hellkite, sure. I mean, they. I think they, they're supposed to attack with this thing. It just forces the trade, which at this point they're going to have to block. So if they don't attack here, they're giving up. They're, yeah, it's, it really does not work out well for them. Yeah, they have to attack. Okay, I'll block. The good thing is this gets gives vigilance so my angel can now just chill vigilance on the angel i'm just going to cast a null drifter seems better than making one angel token or making a bunch of soldiers and then hit with the angel <laughs> angel of the ruins is kind of doing some work here this is just straight good red white control action don't really know what they're up to now i mean they can Give something haste. Yeah, Cranial Ram is, is a good card. They're like an Eldrazi artifacts mashup here, I guess. I mean, if you're dead, you're dead. They can give the the line breaker haste and trample. Or it already has trample. Um sure. I'm not really sure what their plan is here because I get to give double strike with this thing as well so a lot of things are are going to be uh, still lethal okay they had siege smash that's pretty good give no drifter double strike and boom Ooh, a nice little cheeky 3-0 start let's keep going this red white control deck's been a lot of fun all right We've got an opponent here, a little tiny bones. And let's see, does do I even want to be on the play? <laughs> well, I guess I'd probably want to be on the play with Hex Gold Slith, but this looks like a great hand. Two drop creature, a removal spell, and then two powerful fives. Seems like a plan to me. I'll keep this, and then this perilous landscape will just become Oh, they played an artifact. My deck's great against artifacts. <laughs> let's Go get a planes here. Mm -hmm. They've got all these double white cards in hand. Hopefully I draw some artifact removal. And they've got Basking Brood Scale. Yeah, that's a pretty good two. I think I'm just going to expel it here. Because it's not like Hex Gold Slith gets by it. And there's no real reason to let them 
make some tokens here. Next turn I can play the Slith, and then I've got a bunch of fives in hand, so I guess I like to get to five here. Okay, no play. All right, let's play the Slith. So this gets artifact or creature. All right, so nothing too great here, but maybe I'll be able to jolt it awake back the Slith or something like Voltstorm Angel later. A lot of ways for this to go to the graveyard. Oh, so they didn't sack Shattered Landscape to get a red, but then they just played a red. What do they got over there? And they're not playing anything? Okay. I guess I'll attack. Well, if I attack, I have to give first strike. Yeah, that's probably fine. Because that way they can't block. Oh, wait, is this... Oh, it's cycling. That's why it keeps lighting up. I was like, is this an instant? I didn't think it was. All right, they're going to block. I'm going to first strike it. And I guess I passed the turn. And I, I think I have to cycle Jolted Awake. I, maybe I should have just cycled it on my turn. Oh, now they're cracking it? Okay. Probably getting another planes. Yeah. I do think... Yeah, maybe I should have just cycled it in case I drew a cheap creature, though. I don't really have very many cheap plays at this point. Because I just need to hit, make sure I hit my fifth land. So let's cycle this. Maybe I'll hit an angel. Well, I hit a land. But this is a much better land to play. A Johnny Fells the Godsire. Nyoink. Take territory color out of the uh, equation. Oh, wow. And Hex Gold. So that's going to get a counter now? <laughs> this looks great. I even got Witch Enchanter to kill the Mandib Mandibular Kite if I want, though. I'm not really that close to needing to do that. And I have a Wrath of Skies to fall back on if something were to go super wrong. They have six mana. Oh, Colossal Dreadmask. Wow, this matchup is really good for me. Because now I get to just play Witch Enchanter. Blow up the Dreadmask. Hit with the Hex Gold Slith, which next turn, maybe I'll make into a Double Striker. Double Striker with the Slith ability is pretty nice. I even drew Felia here, though. Doesn't look like it's going to be necessary. I mean, we'll see what they play. Maybe they've got their own Wrath of the Skies. They can just blow everything up. Oh, a Johnny Fells the Godsire. Kill my Hex Gold Slith, sure. It's just Double Strike till end of turn, so it doesn't really matter. But I'll probably play Voltstorm and pump my creatures. Because if I, Voltstorm seems like the play anyway, and then this way I'm going to give all my creatures plus one plus one, but because of the double strike, that means that I'm hitting for effectively an extra three points of damage here, which I think is worth it. And then next turn, they have seven mana, but my hand is pretty stacked. I mean, drawing exactly five lands and no more is kind of nice, though I guess Witch Enchanter could have been either. Next turn, probably, mm, maybe Rose Cut Knight, maybe Cycle Decree, maybe Felia, I don't know, or leave mana up for Felia. Kind of depends what they do. They do have to deal with the Voltstorm Angel. I mean, they're at 8, and it's a 4 4 oh, equipping. Okay, that's a, that's a tough way to go about it. What are we doing besides that? Maybe like a fight card or something? Oh, like a signature slam, perhaps? Because that would kind of make sense. It's got to be something here. Oh, they have Stump Stomp, but they can't kill the Angel. Yeah. That is not great for them. Oh, Ether Revolt. Well, I don't need that right now. Let's attack with these two. And if they go to two... I mean, they're, they're pretty screwed either way. Either they trade and go to four, or they just take it and go to two, I think. Do I play Rose Cut Knight, or do I just keep up Decree, or I keep up Felia? I think I'm just going to keep up my mana. Make two Decree tokens, because here's what I can do. I can make two Decree tokens, and then before combat, Wrath, just to get energy, to make my Angel into uh, plus one, plus one to everything. And then... I'll have all a bunch of lethal things. All right, cycle, pay x equals two. All right, draw, draw, land, 
Wrath of the Skies, X equals two. So I can play Felia still. Oh, oh. It, oh, I forgot that that the it kills my tokens. I'm still going to beat them with just the angel, but it is kind of awkward. <laughs> uh, let's give it Vigilance and Lifelink. I don't even think it matters, but... Yeah, all right. Good thing to keep in mind. It, can, it has to blow up your tokens. You can't just use it to generate energy. Well, I'm glad that didn't cost me. Look, free learning. Free learning for both of us. <laughs> and that's a 4-0 start. Let's keep battling. All right. 4-0, despite not even knowing how Wrath works with tokens. <laughs> Very nice. On the draw here with Removal Spell, Cycler, Tapper, and Good Removal Saga. I like it. Okay. Ooh, Ether Revolt. I especially like it. If I can try, huh? Maybe if I can try to not cycle Jolted Awake, it would be nice. But I have to see what they do and what I draw. Oh, nah, I'm just gonna have to cycle it because I, I can't even cast Ether Revolt yet. So I think it would be a kind of bad idea to get too greedy here. And I just drew another expensive card. All right, there we go. There we go. Oh, Wrath too. Nice. Um, let's just Fanged Flames that just to spend my mana. And then next turn, I'll just sack the landscape to get red so I can cast this Ether Revolt. Path of Annihilation. Oof. Okay. Maybe I wait on the Ether Revolt. Because, <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to Wrath of the Skies path itself. I could wrath for two and and get the two tokens. Honestly, that's probably fine, though I guess I can I have a Johnny Fells the Godsire to get something big. Alright, let's just play the Ether Revolt. Let's see if we can get some more things. I mean, with this in play, I can wrath for up to three and still be pretty good. Okay, that that's totally fine, because Worm Coil Larva, I can just hit with a Johnny Fells the Godsire. All right, land. Johnny Fells the Godsire. I have Expel as well, but I like just doing this, because I don't know what's up with this Wrath now. I mean, I guess... <laughs> I guess it, I, I have a token now, which makes the Wrath worse. Ooh, Angel of the Ruins. That's also really good against... The worm coil here. Mm. If I play Solstice Zealot, no, let's just go this kicked on the worm coil. I would really like to get up to seven mana for this Angel of the Ruins, so I'm not gonna cycle it or anything. And then next turn, the Ajani Fells, the God's is gonna go away, so I'll have Revolt. So when I play Solstice Zealot, I can deal four. Oh wow. They have Path, but nothing to do with it. All right. Uh, let's send in the cat here for four points of damage oh they're gonna block they don't trick uh okay yeah hmm you know what i'm gonna play the solstice zealot i'm gonna get two energy i'm gonna kill the last token so now i don't even need to kill the path right right away why are you sacking this? And then I'll play Meadow Tapped and just wait. Land is fine. Spell might be okay too. Right, there's Silumgar or Shiling, Shilgengar. Right. <laughs> Tap land? Ugh. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll play a tap land. Gross. And I'll attack with the the cat here. Okay, pass. Because I could have wrathed to, to kill Shilgengar if it blocked the cat. I'm just going to tap the Shilgengar here with Solstice Zealot. Hopefully I'm not getting fought here. And I'm going to draw land this turn. It's going to be so funny. Oh, they played an artifact. All right, well, let's cast Angel of the Ruins. Arcbound Condor is actually a sick combo with Shilgengar because you can sack... A creature to get a blood and then the blood gives a creature minus one minus one but 
I get to nug both of their things here, which is pretty nice. They do get to kill my cat by sacking Arcbound Condor. They have nothing to put the modular on. They're just going to choose not to put it on the angel. Oh, they don't get to kill the cat because the stupid condor is gone. <laughs> Even better. Uh, I'll hit for four here. I technically have a 5-7, so I don't really need to tap their demon. Also, if they do attack me, then it's not the end of the world. It's like if they have a kill spell for the angel. If they just attack straight up, I'm just going to block. I don't see a reason not to do that. Expanding ooze. Okay, so they have a 3-3. They can adapt it. Anyone attacks, you put a counter on a modified creature you control. Sure. Okay, land. They're at 19. Mm. So right now, I can get a lot of mana off of Wrath. I can play Null Drifter. How badly do I want to kill Shilgengar? Do I want to just use Wrath as like a fireball? It will kill my token. I do know that this time. And their blood token. But I guess that means I can Wrath for four and still play. All right, that's pretty good. And still play Felia. <laughs> yeah, all right. I get four energy, which is going to translate to six damage off Ether Revolt. They have to decide if they want to use their blood token now. Their, their card in hand could be good. They got to choose now. Oh, they're sacking the ooze? Ooh. That's rough. All right. I'll pay zero. That dies. All the blood tokens die. So I basically got spotted the ooze for free. I mean, I think I was winning this game anyway, but that's going to make it a lot easier. And I, I think we're actually going to have a 5-0 start here because now I'm going to get to play Felia. And I guess... I mean, I think it's still... It's more damage to exile the zealot, have it come back with energy... All right, well, I'm going to play Null Drifter. Draw two. No, no reason to play the Ambush. This comes in. I get two energy, and then that deals four because I also have Revolt. Now they're at one. And, I mean, even if they have a Wrath here, which they probably don't, I, any sort of energy will, will get me their next turn. And that looks to be a 5-0 start. Oh, Victimize, Getting Back, Condor, and Shilgengar. That's pretty cool. Doesn't actually do anything, but cool enough, and we're 5-0. and oh. All right, let's see if we can get two more here. This this is, this is this deck's really cruising. All right. Got another opponent here, Elish Norn. Oof. Let's see if uh, the energy deck can keep on going. Well, this deck's kind of this hand's kind of expensive. Five drop, five drop, seven drop on the draw. But I have a two drop removal spell, and I can cycle this decree. Oh, another five drop was a really bad draw. Ooh, okay, you know what? Five one is a pretty good start. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Well, a land's nice. Land plus cycle, and they don't seem to have too fast of a start. Hmm. Mindless conscription's annoying. I, I think I am actually just going to kill it. If they can make it into a 6-6 six, six this turn, I'll be really unhappy. So, And I just want to find one of my many, many disenchants. Horrid Shadow Spinner. Yeah, that'll that'll kind of get the job done. I guess I'll play the Thriving Skyclaw and hope that I get a chance to block this thing. Because as is, they get to attack and bring back their, their uh, Mindless Conscription token. No, this looks bad. I need to draw Wrath of the Skies. Well, I guess a land is actually what I need to draw first, but after that, Wrath of the Skies. Okay, they discard two swamps. Land and... All right, I drew a land, which means I think I play the knight here to start with, because hitting... Uh, oh, am I getting countered? Hitting a Johnny Fells the God Sire would be pretty good. Retribution, Ether, Ether Revolt. Oh, Ether Revolt with double Volt Storm Angel. All right. I think the Angel Retribution is a little far away anyway. Jeez, Brain Surge trigger the Mindless Conscription again. Yeah, they're kind of doing it. I don't think I'm going to have time to, to really do much. I really just need to find Wrath. 
Because if I can find Wrath of the Skies, then I can blow up the Conscription, the Zombie, and the Shadow Spinner, and then we're maybe okay? Okay, five mana. Petrifying Meddler, tap down the Knight. I even have enough energy to, to Wrath the Meddler, too. I'm taking 11 this turn. Yeah, their deck's kind of firing all, on all cylinders, and I mean, our deck is kind of just doing what this deck does, but <laughs> let's see if we can draw Wrath here. All sins will be forgiven if so. Oh, Jolted Awake. Well, let's cycle, because a Wrath would still be pretty good, and now we're dead. I mean, technically I could make a token and survive at one, but not going to do it. Five and one, but still on track to get to seven wins here. All right. Five and one here, battling against Jaya Ballard. And I'm on the play. Planes, planes. Felia into Proud Pack right now. Pretty good. Oh, really good, actually. Turn two, Felia. Turn three, Rhino. Put a shield counter on Felia. Attack, blink the Rhino. Do need to draw land in order to do all that, but I did, so we're all good. And Jolted Awake, I'm probably going to want to keep to bring back Felia if they have a way to kill it. Okay. Oh, well, they better kill it now. They did not seem to, so now I go land, Rhino. Put a shield counter on Felia, attack. Oh, Felia is so good. Blink the Rhino. Take two. Now I have two three threes, and then this is oh. I guess I'm just gonna proliferate actually. And put another counter on Felia. Because I could have put a shield counter on the Rhino, but I'm just gonna want to blink the Rhino anyway. Wow, Felia into Rhino is actually more disgusting than I thought. They need an exile effect. Oh yeah, they can kill the Rhino. So I guess a shield counter on the Rhino would have would have worked out nicely there. Let's just hit and pass. Oh, maybe I should have played Witch Enchanter. The, on, the only thing is, I would get a counter on Felia, but I kind of want to play this as a land. Oh, and they played, they're also playing Black Red. Yeah, that's the other thing. I don't, though I guess if I just had this in play, I could attack and blink it. I suppose the opponent is less likely to make a play into it, though. Oh, they have a flip card and they're not sure if they want to play it or not. And they're, and they're kind of deciding not to, maybe? No, they got to play it. Oh, Fell the Profane. Yeah, it doesn't kill Felia, though. <laughs> All right, so now I go Witch Enchanter. Blow up the Gatekeeper. And this Felia is just going to kill them. It's, it's really sick. Take four. <laughs> You're at ten. Now I have a 5-5 five, five with two shield counters on it. And <laughs> a Witch Enchanter. I'm not really sure what they can do. They can kill Witch Enchanter, I guess. I mean, maybe they have an exile effect, or maybe they have the accursed 2-1 that can uh, take Felia out, but there's not much that kills it. Serpadian Simulacrum? That does not kill it. Wow. Okay, land. Voltstorm Angel. Beginning of combat. Hmm... I think I give my creatures plus one, plus one. And then I'm going to attack. And I think I just blink the angel. They're, they're going to they're gonna block the Felia anyway. All right, breather last the angel, sure. Chump, take three. Pass the turn counter. It knocks off a shield counter, but... That doesn't really matter too much. And then I guess they have five mana here. There are some things they could use to kill Felia, but also Jolted Awake is pretty nice. And I have Expel. And if I draw two, two mana, I have this Null Drifter. So feels like I got all the tools I need to win here. Grim Servant going to five. Are they getting like a Galvanic Discharge? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, they just die. Just attack with Felia and <laughs> flicker their creature. Okay. 
<laughs> that's sick because then they also have to pay three life. <laughs> this is not even close. Uh, they get to Galvanic Discharge to kill my Witch Enchanter and they go to zero. They really go to negative three though. And oh, there we go. That is six and one. Power of Felia cannot be denied. Let's get to the, see if we can get up to seven wins here. All right. Battling against Karn. Well, that's Ugin, but their username is Karn. C-A-R-N. So not even the Karn we know and love. Uh, I'm on the play. Yeah, I'm going to play Glasswing Grace on turn one. Because this hand, first of all, has a seven. Second is just going to go three into three. And I think I'm going to cycle Angel of the Ruins, too. At this point in time. Okay. Draw, draw, land. Let's get a shield counter here. The rhino gets a shield counter. My next rhino is going to get a shield counter. I'm going to expel something. And then I'm probably going to cast Moldrifter at least somewhat close to, to turn seven. Or Noldrifter. Two, two. Okay. Two, two, and a one, one. All right, there's another Angel of the Ruins. This one, I will try not to cycle. All right, they'll block to take the shield counter off. All jokes on them. I've got another shield counter. They don't even know I've got another shield counter. And now with two sevens in hand, I guess it is tempting to cycle Angel, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay. Make another 1-1. One, one. Pass the turn. Oh, Thriving Skyclaw. All right. I'm going to expel one of the inventors so I can hit with both. And all right. After all is said, they've knocked the shield counters off both my rhinos, but that's really not the end of the world. I'm going to wait on cycling here. If I draw red, then I'll be pretty happy I didn't cycle. Okay, and if I draw, I don't really have very many six mana spells, so most spells that I could draw that would make me want to cycle aren't going to be fully disrupted. If I draw a five mana spell, I'll just cast it and wait. Oh, Fanged Flames. Yeah, I will do that. Fanged Flames on the Solstice Zealot. Mm, do I cycle Angel here? Yeah, I guess I do. I don't love it, but I feel like with another seven drop in hand, it's just probably a bad idea not to cycle. I'm going to be kind of annoyed if they play any more artifacts. But the thing is, this is probably going to go away pretty soon here. If they have nothing better to do, they'll just throw it at my rhino, and then the angel is just not going to do anything anyway. Okay, Solstice Zealot, sure. And Fanged Flames, one of those. All right, and then hit me for three. Fair. Okay, Jolted Awake. I can't get anything back, so let's just, oops. Let's just cycle this. Now if I draw red this turn, it's not terrible. Oh, Razor Crest. Uh, let's hit, and honestly, I think I'm just gonna keep Razor Grass ambush in hand, because like, if I play this as a land and draw another land, it's just so unbelievably bad. Yeah, because now, I'm going to nug the Solstice out, and I'm very happy to kill that thing. I'll take three. Draw. Okay, that's actually not bad. So let's hit with the Rhino. And then I can play this to kill their Simulacrum, which I think is pretty good, because if I just played Null Drifter, they'd just get to kill it with Simulacrum anyway, so blowing that up sounds great to me. And they can sack their Landscape. This is going to be a kind of close game, but... The Witch Enchanter can block the Inspired Inventor. Are they have blue in there? No, they're just red-white. The Thriving Skyclaw can hit as a 4-3, then a 5-4, but as long as I draw a land to play Null Drifter, then I can trade with it. Oh, they're reiterating Bolt, and they're going to pay to kill both my things. Okay. And then hit with these for 6. Yeah, now a land is good. But like I said, if I had just... Played Null Drifter, their 1-1 one, one would have killed it anyway. All right, land, perfect, Null Drifter, draw two cards. Okay. Those aren't the best cards to draw. I mean, I die if they have an answer to Null Drifter. 
Oh, Scurry of Gremlins. I assume I die here. Yeah. All right, it's going to come down to the wire. Scurry is a great card. It's, it's a very difficult to beat one. Going to be 6-2 and two now, and got to see if we can get the seven wins here. I, I believe, though. I believe. All right. 6-2, and two, battling against Yargle for the final win, or potentially loss. Mm, on the draw, yeah. Thriving Skyclaw continues to be terrible, but we, we kind of knew that. I mean, this hand, this hand is slow, but actually, is this a keepable hand? Seven drop, five drop, five drop, four drop, double red. No, this is actually just not a keepable hand. As little as I hate to mulligan in a red white deck that doesn't really have any card draw and is trying to play five mana spells, I think that hand is just quite bad. All right, this I will keep, and I think I have to put the Null Drifter back and keep a two, a three, and some good removal. Um, Let's play a little landscape, get second red here. And even though I had to put the Null Drifter back, now that especially that I've drawn a land, I wouldn't mind drawing it at some point here. So shuffling it, get it back in the mix, I think is good. See if I can avoid playing this Glasswing Grace, though I don't think I'm going to. Green, green, okay. Well, I'll likely want to Fanged Flames most things they could play here. 1-2 Nyxborn Hydra? I, I mean, I guess I'll let that one ride. Yeah, I'll play the Glasswing Grace here. My second white source seems pretty important. Okay, so they're stuck on all fours. So they just have like another Nyxborn Hydra here. A Gift of the Viper. Main phase into Fangs. Oh, double all the counters. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going to play Solstice Zealot here. And if they don't have a way to kill the Solstice Zealot, I can tap down the Hydra and then kill it with the Johnny Fells the Godsire. Sounds pretty reasonable to me. All right. Now I'm regretting playing this chapel, of course, since I've drawn all land since. But, you know, what can you do? All right. Tap down the Hydra. And... Well, another land, but a Johnny Fills the Godsire is really good. Please don't have a Hexproof thing. I kind of feel like if they had Hexproof, they would have let it made it so it could attack. All right. All right. Let's attack. I mean, I guess they could have Endurance as one of the special guests, but what am I going to do? Boom. Get to seven wins. They, they tried to cheese me out with the Hydra. It didn't work. And uh, this deck got to seven wins. All right. Let's take a look. You know, the wheels almost fell off. Went from 5-0 to 6-2. But, uh, you know, first pick a white black card. Have all black cards in the first pack. Black and white cards. But ended up with a pretty nice, basically mono white with, what, three red cards. But Ether Revolt's actually really good. Sky Claw still sucks. But... It was good with Ether Revolt, I suppose. And look at this. Double Decree of Justice, double Witch Enchanter, double Angel, two Proud Pack Rhinos. Felio was just like the best card. A Johnny Fells the Godsire is awesome. Wrath was good, though I never really blew that much stuff up with it. And overall, this deck played out really nicely. I didn't face that much Eldrazi, though I do think this deck had some good gameplay against it as well. Well, that'll do it for today. I appreciate you hanging out. Be on the lookout for some cube drafts and Winston drafts coming up. But, uh, you know, been enjoying MH3 as well, so we'll be cycling through that. I uh, always appreciate you hanging out with me. And you know what? I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.